In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And welcome to our celebration of the Eucharist on this feast day of St. John Ogilvy. And through his intercession today, we pray for the people of Scotland and for the Church of Scotland to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Let's call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty everlasting God, who made your martyr St. John Ogilvy an invincible defender of the Catholic faith, grant through his intercession that each day we may increase in faith, hope, and charity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore, tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. My vindicator is here at hand. Does anyone start proceedings against me? Then let us go to court together. Who thinks he has a cause against me? Let him approach me. The Lord is coming to my help. Who dare condemn me? The word of the Lord. I remember the deeds of the Lord. I remember the deeds of the Lord. I remember your wonders of old. I muse on all your works and ponder your mighty deeds. Your ways, O God, are holy. What God is great as our God? You are the God who works wonders. You showed your power among the peoples. Your strong arm redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. You guided your people like a flock by the hands of Moses and Aaron. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, a gentle Father and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can offer others in their sorrows the consolation that we have received from God ourselves. Indeed, as the sufferings of Christ overflow to us, so through Christ does our consolation overflow. When we are made to suffer, it is for your consolation and salvation. When instead we are comforted, this should be a consolation to you, 
supporting you in patiently bearing the same sufferings as we bear. And our hope for you is confident, since we know that sharing our sufferings, you will also share our consolations. The word of the Lord. If a man serves me, says the Lord, he must follow me. Wherever I am, my servant will be there too. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you most solemnly, unless a wheat grain falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. Anyone who loves his life loses it. Anyone who hates his life in this world will keep it for the eternal life. If a man serves me, he must follow me. Wherever I am, my servant will be there too. If anyone serves me, my father will honor him. The Gospel of the Lord. They said of someone who's born in the year 1900 and dies in the year 1970 will have seen more changes in their life than the previous 500 years of life. That the world advanced so quickly over that early 20th century. Also can be said that anyone born in the year 1970 up till today has seen more changes than all of history. You know, our world is completely different. You know, think of silly things like, you know, our phone in our pocket. It has revolutionized the way that we talk to each other, the way that we communicate with each other. You know, there's more computing power in your phone than there was to send the Apollo spaceships to the moon. That's just phenomenal and the different changes in in our culture, in our society. You know, John Ogilvie lived in a time of of great change. He was on the the back of of the Reformation, which really shattered the certainties of of the world at that time, and it introduced a whole new concepts and whole new ideas, not least the printing press, which meant that ordinary people could share these ideas that they weren't reserved to the elite. We live in a time just as revolutionary as the Reformation. And our challenges are different from John Ogilvy. You know, John Ogilvy was trying to defend the Catholic faith, faith against the, the Protestant Revolution. We, I'm glad to say, as Catholics, now work much more closely with the Protestant churches. You know, uh, you, we witnessed that in the uh, the Erskine churches together. We work very closely with one another now. Why? Because we have to. Because our challenge is not facing a reformation from within. Our challenge is to face a world that doesn't believe, that is suspicious of religion, is suspicious of our church. But yet, we are still called by Christ to follow him to be witnesses of his good word, to be witnesses of the gospel. Hopefully, in our lifetime, we will never have to face the martyrdom of John Ogilvie, but we do have to face our martyrdom every day. 
the martyrdom of being willing to speak up against the flow, the martyrdom of being thought of as stupid or naive, the martyrdom of feeling as though we're standing alone. We put our trust in God our Father, and so we turn to Him now in prayer. For the church throughout the world, that as we continue our Lenten journey, we will listen to the voice of Jesus and faithfully follow Him. Lord, in Your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have, are preparing for the Easter sacraments, that God will draw them closer and help them to turn toward all that is holy and good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are facing crisis or loss, that they may grow in their trust of God to bring forth change and a new beginning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our community, that the prayer, fasting, and almsgiving of Lent may bring forth a new springtime of faith in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those trying to discern their calling in life, that they may make space in the busyness of life to let God's word move their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, suffering, or bereaved, that they will be strengthened by the knowledge of Christ's love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I invite you now in the silence of your own heart to place your prayer before the Father. God, our Heavenly Father, you are the God of love who desires what is good for your people. And you raise up in every age men and women of courage and faith. As we pray on this feast day of St. John Ogilvy, we ask you to fill us with that same courage and faith. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. 
will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray, and by your grace may we be set afire with that flame of your love through which St. John Ogilvy overcame every, every bodily torment, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr, John Ogilvy, poured out like Christ's to the glory of your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, Holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the high. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same spirit, spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Ogilvy, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and John our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away. May we see you, your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not only to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving and tender heart and your protection. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr, John Ogilvy, faithful in your service and victorious in suffering. Through Christ our Lord. Thank you for sharing in our Eucharist today, and I hope you have a blessed day. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is in.